Hi, I'm Salma Benawan. In this video, I'm going to show you the flowchart of the entire pre-release material, as well as probable questions that will come about the pre-release material. So I'll be solving the flowchart of task one, task two, task three, and I'm going to solve it using constants to make sure if you have a past paper question about what constants do you have, you can solve it. And I'm also not going to include the pointer I that I used in my last video as it caused some confusion. Here's the pre-release material. And those are the tasks. And that's what we talked about last video, that we need to calculate the cost if you are purchasing tickets separately, if you're purchasing the tickets as a family, or if you're purchasing the tickets as a group, and then find the cheapest option. So here's the flowchart of task one. Whenever you create a flowchart, the first box is usually initializations. So we initialized two arrays, ticket type, it has 10 elements, and ticket cost that also has 10 elements. In this solution, I've also initialized three constants. Lion feeding cost equals 250, penguin feeding cost equals $2, and evening barbecue cost equals $5. The next part of task one is a loop. This is a loop to show all the elements inside ticket type and ticket cost. It's kind of like a repeat until loop. So count equals zero, repeat, print ticket type of count, ticket type of cost, update counter, so count equals count plus one. Is the count equal to 10? Are we finished? If no, it's not equal to 10, then repeat, else we're finished. And finally, we're going to display the constants, print the wildlife park has three extra attractions, print lion feeding cost per person, lion feeding cost, print penguin feeding cost per person, penguin feeding cost, and print evening barbecue for two days cost per person, evening barbecue cost. Now let's look at task two. This is the entire task two and task three on one sheet of paper. Let's look through it step by step. All right, at the beginning, we initialize booking number to zero, and then we ask, is the wildlife open to make a booking? Is the park open to make a booking? Yes or no? Input booking open. Is booking open equal to yes? If it's not, then we end the program. The program's done. If it's yes, we're going to update booking number. Booking number equals booking number plus one, and that will create a unique booking number for each booking. After that, we need to input which day of the week are they coming. Print which day of the week are you coming. Is it Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday or Saturday? And this is a validation. It's a lookup validation. Is day not equal to Monday and day not equal to Tuesday and day not equal to Wednesday and day not equal to Thursday and day not equal to Friday and day not equal to Saturday and day not equal to Sunday? If this is yes, print an error and prompt them to input the day again. If the answer is no, so they have typed one of the valid days, we can move on to the next input. Print how many days will you come, one or two, and input those number of days. We also have a validation check. Is the number of days not equal to one and the number of days is not equal to two? If that's true, if that's yes, print error and prompt them to input the number of days again. If no, that means they've typed a one or two and we have a valid input. It's time to move on to the next set of inputs. So the next set of inputs, the user needs to type how many adults are coming, how many seniors are coming, and how many children are coming. And we need to validate that according to a range check that was specified in the pre-release material. In the pre-release material, it says every adult can bring up to two children. So if there's too many adults, is the number of child greater than number of adult plus number of senior times two? If that's yes, that's too many children. So we're going to print error and we're going to prompt them to input the number of adults, a number of seniors, a number of child again, until we have a valid number of children per older people. Now that we have a valid number of adults, seniors, and children, it's time to calculate the cost if we're purchasing the tickets separately. So in this algorithm, in order to cancel that I, we're just going to first calculate the cost as if you're coming for a one-day ticket, and then we'll make that arithmetic calculation to upgrade to a two-day ticket if that's the case. So cost separately is equal to the number of adults multiplied by ticket cost of zero, which is $20, plus number of seniors multiplied by ticket cost of two, which is $16, plus number of child multiplied by ticket cost index one, which is $12. Then I need to set cost family equal to cost separately and cost group equal to cost separately. And if it's necessary, I'll make calculations to change cost family and cost group as we'll see in the next set.
So here's the case that we are allowed to calculate the cost of a family ticket. If we have up to three children for every two adults, they can come as a family. So we check the range check. Is the number of children greater than 1.5 times the number of adults and seniors? If that's yes, we calculate cost family and it's equal to the rounding of the number of older people multiplied by ticket cost of three, which is $60. After that, whether we have a family ticket or not, we're going to say num people equals num adult plus num senior plus num child. This will give us the total number of people. And the next diamond is num people greater than or equal to six if it is, then they're allowed to have a group ticket. So we'll calculate cost group is equal to the number of people multiplied by ticket cost index four, which is $15 per person. Now that we've calculated the cost if they're coming as separate tickets and if they're coming as family tickets and if they're coming as group tickets, it's time to find the minimum, which one is the least? Is it the cost separate or cost family or cost group? So these three decision boxes we'll decide which one is the cheapest. Look at the first decision box. Is cost separate less than or equal to cost family and cost separate less than or equal to cost group? If this is yes, then the cheapest cost is cost separate. We'll look at the second decision box. Is cost family less than or equal to cost separate and cost family less than or equal to cost group? Then the cheapest cost is cost family. And the last decision box, is cost group less than or equal to cost family and cost group less than or equal to cost separate? If this is yes, then the cheapest cost is paying for tickets as cost group. Now in order to cancel I, we're going to ask the user, is the number of days equals to two? Are they coming for two days? If this is yes, the cheapest cost is now equal to cheapest cost multiplied by 1.5. There's a 50% like increase in the tickets from one day ticket to two day ticket. You can see from the table, one day tickets are $20 for adults and two day tickets are $30. That's 1.5 times. Same thing for child and same thing for the rest of the types of tickets. Since we've asked them, is number of days is equal to two, and the user said yes, and we multiplied the cheapest cost by 1.5, let's go ahead and also ask them, would you like to stay for an evening barbecue? Because this option is only under the two-day option. So print evening barbecue, input evening barbecue. If evening barbecue is equal to yes, then add that to the cost. So cheapest cost is now equal to the cheapest cost plus the number of people multiplied by the evening barbecue cost, which was $5 per person. And we'll take the arrow and we'll also now ask print lion feeding, input lion feeding. Is lion feeding equal to yes? If it is, add that to the cost. So now cheapest cost equals cheapest cost plus number of people multiplied by lion feeding cost. That's the LFC. I didn't have enough room to type it. Again, print penguin feeding. Input penguin feeding. Is penguin feeding equal to yes? Add that to the cheapest cost. So now the cheapest cost is equal to cheapest cost plus the number of people multiplied by PFC, which stands for penguin feeding cost. All right, so now we've finished everything required. It's time to print booking number and print the cost of their entire trip. And as you can see, there's an arrow going from the bottom of the print all the way back, because this is a while loop, prompting the user wildlife open to make a booking yes or no input booking open if booking open is equal to yes we're going to repeat this entire algorithm so we're going to ask them which day are you coming we're going to ask them how many days you're coming how many adults children and seniors and we're going to ask them if you want evening barbecue or if you want line feeding or penguin feeding if the answer was no then we will end the program so this is the flow chart for task two let's look at some probable past paper questions First question, variables, constants, and other identifiers must have meaningful names. Identify and give the data type and use of one array that you could have used in task one. So you could have written ticket type or ticket cost. I said the array's ticket cost equals 20, 12, 16 on. The data type is real, it has real numbers, and the use of this array is to store the cost of each ticket type that's available at the wildlife park. Another question they might ask you about task one is, name one constant that you could have used to create your program. Include the data type and the purpose of this constant. So one constant could have been line feeding cost equals 250. The data type of this is real, and the use of this constant, it stores the cost for feeding the lions, the extra attraction feeding the lions. This is a constant, it does not change throughout the program. 
Another type of question could be describe two validation checks. You know that I've really emphasized on the word describe because sometimes we quickly read questions and I mark students and they just write the name of the validation check but you won't get credit for that question unless you describe how that validation check works exactly. So describe two validation checks that could have been used when inputting the number of days of tickets to buy for task two. For each validation check, give one example of normal data and one example of erroneous data. Of course, give two different validation checks. So the first one you could have used is presence check. There's a lot of different ones, but here's presence check. Describe how presence check works. So presence check, an input is required. This field cannot be left blank. If you leave it blank, an error would happen. Some normal data could be one. Erroneous data would be empty, like leaving the input blank. The second validation check is lookup check. In lookup check, this works by having a specific table with the certain values and the input must be equal to exactly one of those values in the table in order for the data to be accepted. Otherwise, if the data is not one of those values, then the data is rejected. In this case, our table has one and two in it. So the solution must have one or two, otherwise it's rejected. Normal data would be two, erroneous data would be typing September. Another probable question is, explain how your program for task two ensures that each booking has a unique booking number. So this is a typical two mark question. For the first mark, you would have to explain that we have a counter, initialize a counter called booking number, okay, before creating a booking, before creating any bookings, and that's booking number equals zero. And finally, every time a new booking is made, increment that counter by one. Booking number equals booking number by one plus one. This ensures that every time a booking is made, they get a unique booking number. Another probable question could be, data input by customer for task two includes the number of days they will come to the park and the number of children based on the number of older people coming to the park. Identify one suitable validation check. In this case, you can just write the name of the check or for each input and justify your choice. So this is a justify question, has a specific way to answer. Your validation checks must be different. So number of days, one of them could be lookup check. The justification for this is the wildlife park has only one day tickets and two day tickets. Any other value cannot be accepted. So we really ha should use a lookup check in this case. Okay, would you use a lookup check if you're asking somebody to type their name? Probably not, because there's millions of options and you wouldn't be able to create a table with all those options. But for a number of days in the wildlife park, it has to be equal to one or two. So a lookup check is the best type of check to use. Now let's have a look at inputting the number of adults, number of seniors, and number of children. What's a good validation check? In this case, it should be a range check because there's a specific range that has to be satisfied that one adult or senior can bring up to two children. So the range checks should satisfy the rule that the total number of adults plus seniors multiplied by two is greater than or equal to the number of children coming to the park. Um, this is a typical question. Describe the data structures you could have used in task one to record the different available tickets and add-ons at the wildlife park. Include some sample data. Also describe the data type of those structures, those data structures, and the purpose of those data structures. This sometimes comes as a five or mark, five or six mark question. So I've used four arrays. They're one dimensional arrays. I have ticket type. I have the data inside it. This array is of type string. And the purpose of this array is to store the different ticket types available at the wildlife park. Ticket cost is equal to 20, 12, 16, on and on. This array is of type real and has 10 elements and its purpose is to store the cost of each ticket type. Extra attraction is equal to lion feeding, penguin feeding, evening barbecue. This array is of type string. It stores the three different extra attractions you can add on to your ticket. Extra attraction cost is equal to 250, 2, and 5. This array is of type real. The purpose of this array is to store the costs of the different extra attractions you can add on to your ticket. Most likely, the pre-release material will ask you to write task two because usually in a lot of pre-release materials they ask you to like to write the longer tasks so you have different options in my previous video i put the entire program code in less than 70 lines you could write that task two it's task two and inside it has task three or in this video we have the entire task two and task three in one flowchart on one sheet of paper so that's also the possible solution to that question now here's the last question we'll talk about in this video 
Explain how your program identifies the cheapest option for the people coming to the wildlife park. Basically, task three. Any programming statements used in your answer must be fully explained. So I would type, I would write on my IGCSE exam paper, I'd write these lines of code from 33 to 52, and then I would explain what's happening in each set of lines. For those of you who don't want to have I, I've written it without I, so you would just not include I, you know, if number of days is equal to 2, I equals 5, you would erase that, and instead you would have these two lines for 33 and 53. So let's start to explain task 3 for your answer. So I would write, like I've written on the side, in task 3 we followed four steps. For step 1, we calculated the cost for purchasing each ticket separately by multiplying the number of adults by 20 and the number of seniors by 18, 16, sorry, and the number of children by 12. In step two, we found, you know, if a family ticket was possible, so there are up to three children per two adults, we calculated how many family tickets were required, and we multiplied the number of family tickets by $60 per family ticket. And finally, in step three, if there were a total of six or more people going on this trip, we calculated the cost as a group.